When the uh, Founders Circle was meeting over this, I was reading in my daily reading through uh, the days of Josiah. And, uh, you know, this is a young guy who became king and he discovered, he discovered the word of God and he had it read and read and read. And he actually brought a revival that uh, surpassed what other revivals had ever had ever happened in in, uh, in Judah. And um, he actually reinstituted the uh, Passover uh, sacrifice as well. And um, of course, the crazy guy, you know, ended up in a silly decision and got himself killed. But the truth of the matter is that he he reviewed, he recalled, he recalled what God had said. And there are some things that God has said. Now, when I was thinking about that, I, I thought, well, you know, we could present the idea that people can read the covenants of Youth with a Mission. I don't know how many individual y have actually read through all the covenants, the Manila Covenant, you know the the dead the, the red sea covenant the nanning covenant uh the jubilee covenant and then look through all of the uh legacy words and then also the the magna carta the christian magna carta these are these are huge documents that have come to us through our history that have real real issues of commitment within the framework of the great commission that I think we need to take seriously and recall and ask ourselves, have we really committed to this? And then there's the phenomenon. Then there's the actual phenomenon of this covenant that uh, David Hamilton was clearly articulating that the, this vision that God gave Lauren is a covenant of God to those who he might apprehend to participate. Uh, and, 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 you know, I was just uh, reading in some document somewhere of, um, the importance that uh, of God placing the anointing that was on Moses upon the 70 and that he came down in the cloud and he, he didn't just give them, you know, an anointing. He took what was on Moses and gave it to them. So that gave them a sense of, of uh, continuum in a vision and a purpose and an anointing and a calling. And I think that there's something about thinking about this covenant of the of the um of the waves that we as individuals who are apprehended by god within the family and fellowship and movement of YWAM, that we become agents and participants and embraces of that particular covenant and become agents of promoting that and living that also that's how that's how we will loop, move into the future we don't have a future except that we have those who have embodied and embraced this particular covenant for themselves and have become agents of promoting and activating it into the future. So there are a number of issues here, like Josiah, of recalling, do we, have we made this application yet? Are we, you know, the other thing is this, that there is also pain on the planet. There's huge pain on the planet. And, um, and the, the enemy loves to accuse God of, of, of causing this or accuse God of doing nothing in relation to the fact that the pain is there. These are the two accusations that come and they're right across the planet. But you know, one thing that um, the saints of old did is they, they, they spoke very honestly to God about the realities that they encountered. But then they, then they also asserted that, that these realities are not very good in terms of, uh, illustrating what God is like. And so they, they have this uh, argument with God, not against him and not in bitterness or cri a spirit of criticism, but to, to hold fast. It's called lament. This one third of the Psalms are lament, an honest interface. God, how do we move forward as the people of God in the face of such disaster? How do we move forward in the, uh, as a people of God in the face of such oppressive intentionality on the part of the enemy manifest through big power brokers who want to absolutely remove the testimony of God from the planet. How do we do this? But Lord, even so, 
as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even so, even if we even if we go into the furnace, we will not bow down to the idols. And so there are those aspects also that we that that are part of the re relative framework of what we face on the planet today. And of course, as a part of recall, you know, as Nehemiah came back to to restore uh, the city and the temple, he faced the challenges and we, <laughs> I, he faced shutdown. Man, if ever a guy faced shutdown, it was Nehemiah. And are you all experiencing shutdown? There's, there's a challenge here of being shut down. And you know, their response was, they made a record of their history. And my God, it was honest. There's never been a more honest statement of a people's journey than the statement of half the day with the elders recalling and confessing their sins and identifying with the sins of their fathers. But you know, they had a, they had a lens through which they were viewing this. And that was the lens of God's opinion of himself declared to Moses way back there in Exodus. We need to realign. We realign with God's opinion of himself as we look at the realities of the earth and we look at the history and the point of history that we are in, in terms of the 60 years, we still align with you and we trust you. We trust you. I believe one of the great anointings of God upon YWAM is that we are called and anointed to demonstrate the trustworthiness of God in every square inch of the planet. So these are the these are the dot, uh, the elements that we can grapple with in our particular. I'm not suggesting that they must must be done, but there is a framework of remembering. There's a framework of asking: Have we not done what we should have done, and are we doing what we shouldn't do? And then a realigning in our loyalty to God and into the call of the Great Commission and in the covenant of waves, and then go forward to say uh, to the, to go to go to the the, the authority then to be releasing and decreeing as the people of God uh, in unity uh, with the Spirit of God and the presence of God in our midst. So, Alan, that's a long response to your question, but that's how I see and anticipate and hope and dream. But obviously, uh, it's the Holy Spirit that is the one who is to lead us in all of this. Yeah.